this video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on accounting for branches, foreign branch. I wish to solve one sum here before you. Just observe the sum on the screen which I intend to solve. This is the sum which I wish to solve here before you. DM Delhi has a branch in London which is an integral foreign operation of DM. At the end of the year 31st of March 2007 in the branch business, the following trial balance in UK pound is given. This is the trial balance given to you. Fixed assets acquired on 1st of April 2013, remember, and you are given the rate of 1st of April 2013 when the 1 pound is equal to 70 rupees. At that time, these fixed assets were acquired. Opening stock, goods from head office, expenses, debtors, creditors, cash at bank, head office account, purchases and sales. The head of, in the head office books, the branch account stood as follows. Opening balance, goods sent to branch. So goods sent to branch and goods from HO, so 64,000 64, pounds equivalent value is equal to 4926,000. This is the remittance, closing balance. The following further information is given fixed assets are to be depreciated at 10% on straight line basis. On 31st of March, expenses outstanding, prepaid expenses, closing stock. These are the exchange rate that is on the date of purchase of fixed asset. This is the rate of exchange at the beginning of the year. This is the close of the year and this is the average rate for the year. You are required to prepare the trial balance incorporating the adjustment of outstanding and prepaid expenses converting UK pound to the Indian rupees trading and profit and loss account for the year ended on 31st of March 2007 and the balance sheet is to be prepared of the London branch as would appear in the books of Delhi head office DM. Now for this sum, the most important point that you should remember integral foreign operation. So this branch is a is operating and the operations of the branch and the operations of the head office they are integral foreign operations so whatever the operating activity of the head office is there those operating activities made of what purchase production sales maintenance of particular good particular item and the branch is established to do any one of these operating activity then that branch is considered to be the integral foreign operation of the branch. And when there is an integral foreign operation of the branch, then conversion of trial balance has to be done as prescribed in the accounting standard. Now suppose that the head office has a business of say X item and the branch is also operating operations relevant to X item, then it is an integral foreign operation. But say otherwise, the head office is operating activity pertains, pertains to X item and the foreign branch operates in Y or Z item which is not related to X item, then it is not treated as integral foreign operation. Then it is non-integral foreign operation. This is a sum wherein the foreign branch operations are integral to the operating activities of the head office. That's an important point to be kept in mind. Now, first of all, I would like to convert this trial balance given in pound and sterling to a Indian rupee. So, let me do that. And at that time, I will explain you how the procedure, what is the method in which or what is the steps with which this type of sum should be solved, that also I am going to demonstrate. Just pay attention. So, this is the trial balance, pound. Here the conversion rate will be recorded. Here the Indian rupees will be recorded. This is the trial balance given to me. The first step, copy the entire trial balance in pound sterling. Here, fixed assets, stock, Goods from HO, 
the debit balances should be recorded in this column credit balances should be recorded in this column expenses debtors creditors credit balance cash at bank debit balance HO account credit balance purchase and sales now when I copy this trial balance in this fashion I should keep some fillers to give the effect of adjustment so first of all copy the trial balance and when you copy the trial balance keep a filler and when you copy the trial balance try to write monetary items at a time in a group and the other transactions during the year entered into and its summary is reported in the trial balance those to be presented in a separate group sales purchase and expenses are the items they are the transaction not one transaction so many purchase transactions so many sales transactions so many expense transactions they have occurred during the year and the summary of those transactions operating activity transactions are grouped together debtors creditor cash and bank balance they are the monetary items because its monetary value is fixed for the purpose of exchange that is no subject of any it is it is not subject to any change by negotiation in future see this type of monetary items and these are the fixed assets this is how the trial balance is to be copied initially now next you are given this is the first information given to you goods sent to branch goods from HO now what accounting standards say you that techniques for foreign currency translation the integral foreign operation following are the standard recommendation first all transactions of integral foreign operation be translated at the rate prevailing on the date of transaction this will acquire date wise details of the transaction entered by the operation together with the rates weekly and monthly average permitted if there are no significant change in the rate see now here goods sent to branch at a one stretch the goods are sent to the branch or there are frequent transactions during the year when the goods are sent to the branch. There are frequent transactions, more than one transaction. Every time the transaction, when the goods were sent, it was converted into pounds. So, whatever the goods from, goods from HO, 64,000 pounds, and goods sent to branch, this is the uh, actual. This will require the date-wise details of the transaction entered by the operation. So, the date wise exchange values considered when this total was worked out. So this goods from HO is to be reported on actual basis. So no exchange rate is to be applied. 64,000 its actual rupee value is this one that should be re recorded in conversion. This is how integral foreign operations are to be. Con the foreign trial balance is to be converted into Indian rupee. Goods from HO is to be converted on actual basis. Similarly, this closing balance, 22,800 equivalent values this month, this is to be recorded, actual basis, on the basis of this information. This is actual rate operated for each transaction, and it summarized, and its summarized value is this, and the summarized value in case of pound selling is this, so it is converted on the actual basis. Now, I want to give the effect of this adjustment. Fixed assets are depreciate, 10% on state then, 24,000. Now depreciation, straight line basis, 10%. So let me calculate the depreciation. What is the entry? Depreciation account, debit to asset account credit. So this depreciation, expense, debited in trial balance, and these fixed assets will be reduced by 2,400. So 24,000 minus 2,400, I will change the value of these fixed assets 24,000 minus 2,400, I will write 21,600. This is how the adjustment effect should be given in the trial balance in itself. Then you should go for conversion. So the second step for the purpose of solving the sum is to give the adjustment effect in the trial balance in itself. Then you should go for conversion. And before that, always goods from HO in the balance are to be recorded on an actual basis. This is an important point. This is covered under the second step. Now, expense outstanding. So, expense account debit 
तो आउटस्टैंडिंग एक्सपेंस अकाउंट क्रेडिट जिस एक्सपेंस अकाउंट डेबिट सो फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एक्सपेंस इज देर टू दैट यू आर रिक्वायर टू एड फोर हंड्रेड सो एक्सपेंस अकाउंट डेबिट सो फोर थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड प्लस फोर हंड्रेड सो दैट विल बिकम फाइव थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड आउटस्टैंडिंग एक्सपेंस अकाउंट क्रेडिट सो आउटस्टैंडिंग एक्सपेंस विल रिकॉर्डेड इज क्रेडिट बैलेंस ऑन द क्रेडिट कॉलम फोर हंड्रेड एंड दिस हेज बिकम फाइव थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड दिस इज हाउ द एडजस्टमेंट इफेक्ट इज टू बी गिवन इन द ट्रायल बैलेंस दैट्स एन इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट प्रीपेड एक्सपेंसिस प्रीपेड एक्सपेंस अकाउंट डेबिट टू एक्सपेंस अकाउंट क्रेडिट दैट इज एडजस्टमेंट एंट्री सो प्रीपेड एक्सपेंस विल अपियर ऑन द एसेट साइड मीन्स In the debit balance, prepaid expense account debit to expense account credit of so five thousand two hundred minus prepaid expenses two hundred, so that will become five thousand. So this five thousand two hundred is changed to five thousand. That's an important point. Now closing stock, I write at the end, just like adjustment eight thousand. Now this is how adjustment effects are given. Now I should write down the rates of conversion for the. Purpose of writing down the rate of conversion, you are required to refer to the details of accounting standard. Now, first April two thousand thirteen. This is the date on which these fixed assets were purchased. So, fixed assets and the depreciation thereon is to be converted on the basis of exchange rate that prevailed on the date of purchase of fixed asset. Notice it. The fixed assets are translated using the exchange rate. As at the date of purchase of the asset, so date of purchase of asset to first of April two thousand thirteen. So this fixed assets and the depreciation will be converted into Indian rupee at the rate of rupee seventy per pound. So rate for conversion seventy for depreciation rate of conversion is seventy. That's an important point. Now next, you are given the rate at the beginning. This rate at the beginning is given to you, is for the purpose of this opening stock, and the accounting standard suggestion for that is, cost of inventory is translated at the exchange rate that existed when the cost of inventory were incurred or realized value is translated, applying the exchange rate when the realizable value is determined, which is generally the closing rate. So at the end of the previous accounting year. The closing stock was converted at the closing rate. That becomes the opening stock in the current period. So previous year closing rate is to be applied to the opening stock. So opening stock eleven thousand two hundred on with the opening rate seventy six will be applied. Similarly, this closing stock to which you are required to apply the rate closing at the end of the year and the closing rate is seventy seven. So for closing stock. The rate is seventy-seven, but the opening stock is rate is seventy-six. That's the beginning rate. This is the closing rate. Now this is how the rates are to be applied. Now for monetary items, closing rate is to be applied. Now which are the monetary items? Rate as four thousand eight hundred is the exchange value determined, not subject to any negotiation, not subject to any change. It is a determined exchange value between the. Contracted party at the arm length discussion and transaction. So here the closing rate is to be applied. Same way, creditor closing rate seventy seven is to be applied. Similarly, outstanding expense, prepaid expense, and cash and bank balance are the monetary items. To that also the seventy seven rate will be applied. Seventy seven rate means one pound is equal to seventy seven rupees. How much for twelve hundred cash and bank cash and bank in pound? Now, sales, purchase, and expense is a summary of transaction incurred during the year. So there is not one purchase transaction, not one sales transaction, not one expense transaction. There are various sales transaction, various purchase transaction, various expense transaction, and these transactions are entered into by the branch in the London, in the country where it operates. So we are not knowing the exact rate, the date on which suppose a branch has purchased the goods. Twelve thousand pound, one thousand purchase is made by the branch on particular date. On that date, we don't know the exchange rate. So in such situation, the accounting standard standard suggests that you should go for the average rate. So all transactions of integral foreign operation will be translated at the rate prevailing on the date of transaction. This will be required. This will require the date-wise detail of the transaction entered into for the operation together with the 
but in the absence of such information and there are no huge fluctuation in the exchange rate, the average rate can be taken. Average rate is permitted in such situation in the absence of information. So sales, purchase and expense, you are required to apply the average rate. This is the average rate. So I have recorded the rates. Now, one pound is equal to 70 rupees. How much for 21,600 pounds? So for that, you are required to multiply. One pound is equal to 70 rupees. How much for 21,600 pounds? So multiply. You will get the Indian rupee. This debit item should be recorded in the debit column. Stock converted at the rate of 60. 76, so 11,200 into 76, 8 like 51,200. Sales converted at the rate of 75, so 96,000 into 75. So I will write in the credit column 72 lakhs. 12,000 into 75, I will write in the debit column. 5,000 into 75, I will write in the debit column 3 lakhs 75,000. 5,000 into 75, 3 lakhs 75,000. 48 converted at the rate of 77. 32 converted at the rate of 77 but recorded in the credit balance because it's a creditor's balance. Depreciation expense debit balance converted at the rate of 70 debit balance. Outstanding expense converted at the rate of 70 credit balance. Prepaid expense is converted at the rate of 77 debit balance. Cash at bank debit balance. And closing store converted at the rate of 77. That is that I not credit balance that I record here as an information. Now I'll try to tell you the trial balance and the difference in trial balance. See, total of debit side 92 like 9600 that is recorded here. And from that all these things are deducted. You will get the exchange difference of 12,400 and this 12,400 is to be credited to profit and loss account because it's a credit side item. Credited to profit and loss account in case of integral foreign operation. Had there been a debit balance it will be also transferred to profit and loss account. So exchange difference arising on transaction of financial statement is charged to profit and loss account. So this 12,400 will be credited to profit and loss account. This is how the conversion point is done. Now I want to prepare trading and profit and loss account for the branch. So this is my trading and profit and loss account. Here I am going to prepare the balance sheet. Fixed assets. Balance sheet asset side I write but I am going to write out depreciation and the cost on which the depreciation is provided that will be found out later on. Opening stock trading account debit side. Goods from H or trading account debit side. Sales trading account credit side. Purchase trading account debit side. Expense profit and loss account debit side. Debtors balance sheet asset side. Creditors balance sheet liability side. Depreciation, profit and loss account debit. So after deducting depreciation of how much? 1 lakh 68,000, 15 lakh 12,000 was recorded in the outer column. So fixed assets, 15 lakh 12,000 plus 1 lakh 68,000, that is the opening balance of fixed assets. Outstanding expense, balance sheet liability side, prepaid expense, balance sheet asset side. Cash and bank, balance sheet asset side, head office account just like capital I write in the inner column. Exchange difference as I told you will be credited to profit and loss account. Now closing stock, trading account credit side, balance sheet asset side, adjustment item. Now find the gross profit, total of credit minus total of debit. This is the gross profit, transfer to profit and loss account. Net profit will be added to HO balance. So in the outer column, you will find the total HO balance. Have a total of balance sheet, 26,5400. Here also 26,5400. This is how totals of balance sheet agree. So the sum is simple. The most important point that you should keep in mind that it's a sum on integral foreign operation on the basis of the, with the rate of conversions are decided. And when you convert a trial balance before that, give the effect of adjustments in the trial balance itself, in itself so that it will be very convenient to you for preparing trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet for the branch. So this is how I have tried to solve the sum on foreign branch.
I have tried to explain you this some. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to Allah.